So a bat house, and this is a photo of a bat house that you have on the cover of your book. I didn't even know that these were a thing. They're like bird houses, but it's a bat house. Yeah, except that they're open at the bottom instead of a hole in the front with a floor. And so you people put these up and construct them purposely so bats can live in them. Right. And how do you get uh, a bat to get in there? Well, just like birds, they find them and decide they like them. They're, oh, wow. Uh, Look at that picture. That's crazy. That, that bat house was was occupied by 105 bats within a week of the time it was put up. I like how you have the little Batman logo on the front of it, too. <laughs> 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 so within a week it was put up, there was over 100 bats in there. That's right. Now, I wouldn't say that that's what you'd expect all the time. It often takes six months to a year, even sometimes a year and a half to two years to track bats. But uh, if you put up the right kind of bat house in the right kind of place, you'll probably track some bats and it can be a lot of fun and what is uh the right kind of bat house like do you have to put something in there to attract them no just uh roosting crevices are three quarters of an inch to an inch wide usually the bats like those narrow crevices because they're used to snakes coming after them and like if a big rat snake comes into a bat house to try to catch a bat if the bat's roosting in a place only three quarters of an inch wide the snake comes in, he can't open his mouth wide enough to get around the bat's head, He can, but the bat opens his mouth and bites the snake's nose. <laughs> so I suspect that's a large part of why bats like those narrow crevices is protection against one of their dominant predators. That makes sense. So you would set one of these things up, leave it, and that would help control all sorts of mosquitoes and pests and things that are on your property. Yes. Uh, putting up bat houses can be a big help in many ways. There was a recent study done in the Mediterranean that showed that when they put up bat houses strategically located around rice paddies, that they no longer had to use pesticides. Really? That's, uh, that's, that's amazing. Like, how many bats do you need to control pest? Like, you know, what, what kind of bugs are we talking about besides mosquitoes? Uh, those were moths that they were controlling, and bats have been found helping protect rice in Thailand where they're eating white-bellied plant hoppers. They'll eat a wide variety of insects. Uh, one important point to make, you know, we hear a lot about the importance of biodiversity, and the bat houses in the Mediterranean that successfully eliminated the need for pesticides. They didn't mean that there were never any more pests or that there was no pest damage. What the bats have to do to eliminate the need for pesticides is just lower the damage to a level where the da cost of the damage is less than it costs the pestis to put pesticides out. Mm. So the reason that worked was that there was a national park not very far away. And so, you know, if you just have miles of monoculture, uh, what do the bats do in the off-season when your pests aren't there? They're going to starve to death. And so by having diverse habitat not far away, in the off-season, the bats had a place to go eat until they were needed over the rice paddies again. Mm, okay. That makes sense. So when you uh, first got here, you, you're dealing with these people that want to eradicate bats, you had to convince them that bats are very important. And how did you go about doing that? Like, what did you do to try to educate people? Well, this goes back a ways. When I, what started out, I, when I got my first job, it was a really great job. I was, got a full salary just to go have fun in the world as far as I looked at it because I could go anywhere in the world I wanted, stay as long as I wanted, as long as I did good research on some aspect of bat biology. And um, so when I announced that I was going to resign that to do full-time bat conservation work, even my closest friends thought I was stark raving crazy. Because in those days, almost everybody, especially in America, thought that if not all, at least most bats were rabid and they would much rather pay to have a bat killed than to have it saved. And uh, so it was very difficult at first 
You know, we hear a lot from environmentalists, conservationists about the need to win battles. You know, send us X amount of money so we can beat up on such and such a company. And people, there's a certain type of people that kind of love that. And, uh, but, you know, if you're starting out to save something that everybody hates and they'd really rather spend money to kill it than to save it, you got to get a whole lot more clever than just asking them for money to save the animal. So I had, I don't think it was because I was particularly smart or anything, but I had to learn early on to win friends instead of battles. And what I found was if I went about it right and I won enough friends, I didn't need to win the battles. And that's become kind of a dominant part of my approach to conservation is, first of all, you listen to people, and I don't care if they say, you know, I had fun burning a bat cave in which I killed thousands of bats or whatever they say, you know, we shouldn't be dwelling in the past. It's the future that counts. And we've all made crazy mistakes in the past, and we wouldn't want to be hated for the rest of our lives for what we did wrong before we knew what was right. But I found that if I listened to people and took them seriously and understood that even the person with the wildest tail probably had some reason for believing it. And the more I listened and understood, the better I became at countering it. And also, I always had the attitude of, I'm not here to just help bats. I'm here to help people and bats. And if you got a problem, I want to know what it is. I want to understand it. And then maybe I can help you solve it. And so I learned to be good at listening to people. And I'm sure you've experienced a good share of winning is just listening. Most people will like you if you just take time to listen to them, even if you are at opposite poles as what you believe. And so by, by learning to listen well and then have an attitude that, what can I do to help you? Uh, I was able to change a hell of a lot of people's minds about bats. <laughs>